Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on Microsoft SQL Server 2012 integration services. My name is Gideon Ogongo. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to use a few of the workflow tasks in both Control Flow Engine and the Data Flow Engine of the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 integration service platform. In order to achieve an end-to-end -end solution we will be cleaning a file containing a list of presidents, vice presidents, and their tenure. So before we get started, I would like to show you what the file looks like. On the desktop, I have a folder that I have created, and this folder contains two other folders. First one contains a list of presidents, most importantly, the president source. This contains a file that I picked up off of the internet. It has a title that describes what the content of the file is, presidents and vice presidents. It has a space, it has a president, the tenure for the president, the vice presidents for that tenure. And in a case where you have a presidents uh, between two terms and a different vice presidents, you have a space before the vice president's name. What this demonstration seeks to achieve is to show you how to take this file containing a list of all the presidents and convert them and clean them and have a list of presidents with the header taking off, the space right immediately after it, and the list of tenures and vice presidents as well. So let's get started. To get started, I am going to open up Visual Studio. I am going to create a new SSIS project. Uh, this will be an integration services project. And I'm going to call this data cleaning. I'm going to leave the location as defaulted. And I'm going to leave the solution name as so as well click on the OK button and our environment will be prepared for us. Now just to give you a little bit of a tour we have here control flow this is where we create a workflow of tasks representing runtime functionality that will support our package. On the other side we have the data flow and the data flow represent the pipeline. On the left hand side we have a series of toolboxes and this toolbox contains elements that we are going to use to be able to uh, do our data cleaning. So I'm going to get started by going to other tasks and here I'm going to look for uh, in fact in favorite I'm going to look for a data flow task because we would like to uh, perform a series of data cleaning. Now, data flow task represents a pipeline, so if I double click the data flow task, it automatically switches to the data flow tab. And from here, I can define the source, a series of transformation, and a destination after the transformations have been applied. I'm going to begin by going to other sources. Because our file is a text file, I'm going to use the flat file source to be able to create a connection manager. So click on the flat file source, drag it to your design environment and the red sign that you see here indicate that the flat file source has not been configured. I'm going to double click and I have the opportunity to create a connection manager that points to that file. I'm going to give this a name, I'm going to call it president source and then give it a description. Now, you will immediately see a browse button that indicate that you can point this connection manager to the file that we are trying to clean. I click on the browse button, takes me directly to the folder, and I'll choose the president's source. It gives me the details of the file from locale to code page. It also tells me how the text file is formatted and I can see here 
if I want to skip one or two rows from the file, I have the ability to do that from here. Now, it's a good practice to always go back to the column and see what the file looks like. Okay, you can see we have the header row, we have a space and a series of presidents list. And then you can go back to the general, indicate that you want to skip the first row by making that, incrementing that to one. And if you go back to column, you can see that we have lost the first, uh, the blank space in between. We would like the header to remain and we will be changing it as we go forward. And here in the advanced mode, I am going to indicate that I want my header to have a name of presidents. This will represent the column name for my file. And I'm also going to increment the width of the column. In this case, the column is a string, and I'm indicating that the size of the string is going to be 250 character. Now, just to review my work, I can see here my locale is United States. The code page is 1252 Latin. And then my text is delimited, and it has a carriage return left. I'm skipping the first row, and I have a column names in the first data row. Okay. Now, I'm going to click on the OK button to indicate that I, I am done configuring this connection manager. As you can see, I have a name, and I have a president, which is the name of the column that I would like to see. So I'll click on the OK button, and you can see the red sign disappears. The next thing we would like to do now is to connect to um, to bring in one or two of the transformation component that we can use to clean this file. And I'm going to begin by using a conditional split. Since the file will contain a series of parts that I would like to remove, a conditional split allows me to do just that. Okay? So I will indicate that once this workflow of task is completed, I would like to perform the next task below it. In this case, this indicate my president's constraint of completion, which will automatically begin the conditional split. If I double click on the conditional split, I am able to indicate the column that I would like to split as well. So I'm going to call this vice president. And then the defaulted output will be president. I can put a series of expression here, and this expressions will help me find all the vice presidents in the file. To save us a little bit of time, I have a text file here that we can use. And the text file contains the expressions for this particular demonstration. OK, let me take the expression, and I will explain it to you. I'm going to paste this expression here in the conditional box. And then if I move my mouse away, I like the fact that uh, the red highlights automatically disappears to indicate that my expression is correct. All right. The substring here indicate that I would like to find a series of string inside the president column, starting from the first character on in the file. And then I am looking for a character that is not equal to a blank space. If we examine the file again, you realize what we are actually looking for is where the vice president, the first character of the vice president is a blank space. So we can immediately change this expression to indicate a double equal sign which represents a blank space and in essence whatever goes into this output will be the vice president's and whatever is left in the file will go into the default output name. I'm going to click on the OK button and my conditional split is done. Now because conditional split if you look at the indication here on this icon it represents a single column coming in and multiple column or multiple split coming out I need a derived column to be able to collect the appropriate column. If I drag in the completion, a dialog box allows me to indicate the column that I would like to take. 
in this case the president column. I'll click on the OK button and because we have only successfully removed the space before all the vice presidents we still need to be able to clean out the tenure for the presidents and the vice presidents tenure as well. Let's do that. On the derived column I have received the president's column and you can see I can apply for that expression to the president column to indicate that I would like to clean it further. I can do that by going back into my folder and into the other folder you have the expression file and I have just another expression that I want to use. I'm going to copy it I'm going to take it back into the expression box and let me explain this to you. The substring is going to start in the president column and it's going to start from the first character in the president column and we're going to find a particular string in that column and the string that we are looking for is a left open parenthesis. We're going to move forward one character and we are going to backspace twice. Let's go examine what that will give us. We start from the beginning of the presidents. We find a character with the left open parenthesis. We're going to move forward once. We're going to backspace twice. And that leaves us with the president's name and with no space in front of it. I'll close this file. OK. I'll click on the OK button. This now indicates that I have completed my data cleaning. Then I need to pass this out to an output where I can see the result of my cleaning. Under the other destination in my SSIS2 box, I would like to put this into a flat file destination. So I would drag in a flat file destination and then drag in the precedence constraint. And from here, because my red squiggly shows up again, I can double click it to actually configure it. Now, by default, if you already have a file connection manager, it will show up but you should indicate that you want to create a new file connection manager. I will do that by clicking on the new button. My file is going to be delimited, so I'll click OK. I'll give it a name. I'll call it the President's Destination. And I will browse and indicate that I want to put the same the result in the data folder. I'll call the result Clean President because we already have a clean file so I will indicate that this is going to be the clean president. There is no column name in the first error row that we are expecting. We are not skipping any row this time and if you go to the column that's exactly what you will see and then you can see the size is also going to be a data type of string and the column width is going to be 250 character. That's great. Now once I click on the mapping I am automatically mapping the input column, which is the data that is received from the derived column, straight to the destination column, which is the data that we have created just now. I'll click on the OK button and our data cleaning is completed. Just a few review. We created a data source to a flat file which contains dirty data. We started by using conditional split to find the strings that we don't want, separate them, we collect the strings that we need, we perform further cleaning on the string, and we pass that out to the flat file destination. Let's run this package and see what the result is. I'm going to right click on the package, I'm going to execute the package, and then you can see our package executes successfully. Well, I can tell because it has that green mark right next to every single one of the workflow tasks. We received 65 rows. After we've applied the condition and sl split, we are left with 43 rows. And because we're only doing row level cleaning, we're left with 43 rows by the time we pass it out to the output. I'm going to stop debugging by clicking on the stop debugging button. 
or I can go to debug and I can stop debugging from there as well. Let's go ahead and examine the result of our package. If I go back to data, I have a clean president. I double click it. That is the result of our clean precedence. This is the end of this demonstration. Thank you.